Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over UFC 290 from a betting perspective for this week. Um, had a pretty good week last week betting, and we're going to you know continue the same process that we always do. When it comes to um, DFS, right, which is what I usually do, the overarching presumption there is that the lines are somewhat accurate. Um, however, when it comes to betting, we're, by definition, if you're betting on a fight where you're giving away big, you're sort of presuming that the fight lines to some degree are inaccurate. And again, the concept and the philosophy by which I wager on pretty much everything is to try to gauge the psychology that goes into a line and basically fade the part of the line that is driven by bias, by, by overwhelming uh consensus and when it comes to uh prop betting mma provides some extreme examples of uh, of outcomes that are completely overbet by the public people that bet on props just they kind of settle on binary outcomes they, they settle on the fact that there are only two ways that a fight can go or so, sometimes three and they pound those particular sides. And there's simply much more variance to UFC fighting than that. And while I am not skilled enough to say, you know, to, to out analyze the public, what I certainly am good enough at is, 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 is determining what lines are overvalued. I mean, if everybody's presuming that the fight can only go one of two ways, I promise you that those two ways are not good value. So what we're trying to do is find uh, props and outcomes which are overlooked yet still have a reasonable chance to come in based on our analysis as well. And we've done very, very well with this. And again, what's fun about this type of wagering, well, in, in life and in general, is, is you know you're going to always be on the sharp side. Um, sometimes you're going to be on the sharp side of the sharp side. In other words, sometimes... The, the sharp sides get so sharp that you want to fade those also. And that that's kind of heavy duty stuff that back from, you know, in my hedge fund uh, uh, analyses, which uh, that's actually for another day. Uh, nonetheless, uh, hopefully learning how I think about MMA wagering and applying that to other forms of wagering will help you just be a better wager, be a, just a sharper uh, an analyzer, of pretty much everything um, where you can put money on. Anyway, uh, for those of you that are doing this for the first time with me, uh, here are the rules. Uh, every fight card, I, I will bet every fight. And again, that's not the best money management system in the world, but I don't care. You know, this is, this is what we're doing. And we're betting one unit on each fight. Uh, and one unit uh, for me is $180. I just don't foresee that going up or down. Uh, 180 high for those in the, in the Jewish religion know what that means, very lucky. Um, so uh, we're going 180 per fight. And what we've been doing recently is uh, is making sure that in the last fight, we give you something that is more than enough to get back all your losses from the previous fights, presuming we're going to lose them all. So it's a fun it's a fun way to play. And I promise you that you are going to be on stuff that very few people are on, which always makes it, I mean, at least to me, like a little more satisfying. Uh, uh, like last week when we had Romanoff by decision, which basically nobody had, we had, oh, we had all kinds of good stuff last week. Anyway, um, let's take a look. And well, Kirk versus Esteban Rebovich. Now this was weird. I was expecting the MMA math uh, patrol to get on top of this one because last week or last fight, Rebovich fought uh, Loic uh, Razaboff and uh, basically got taken down 11 times. And Rosabov went on to get crushed in his last fight. So I was expecting there'd be some type of MMA math stuff going on where people would be all, you know, would be looking to fade Rebovich, but that's certainly not been the case. As a matter of fact, what you're seeing this week is kind of another um, phenomenon, which I've noticed in the MMA uh, Twitter sphere and betting sphere is people just giving too much credit for, for losses. Um, they look for things in, in fighters' losses that and ignore the, the, the part of their fight that had them that uh, contributed to their loss. Like, for example, everybody that I'm watching on, on content this week 
is, is set on this idea that Rebovich was so good on the feet because he was able to get to uh, Loic, uh, you know, a couple of times and forgetting the fact that he had just atrocious takedown defense and allowed himself to get taken down 11 times. So this week, even though Kirk, it's possible, might do the same thing to try for takedowns, for some reason, no one is betting on that this week. Everybody's just presuming that that Rebovich's aggression on the feet is just enough to overcome it. And 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 so for me, that sounds good to me. We'll just take Kirk. <laughs> so Kirk plus only 135, you know, it seems like a very, very you know, short price. So as they say, you know, it's it's, it's probably such a bad bet that it's probably going to win. So we're going to take Kenwell Kirk plus the 135. And again, what we're going to do here is Kirk for 180. And I do promise that we will, um, that we will uh, put these in after we bet, after we, we record, because it doesn't allow me to do it when, uh, when I'm on Zoom. But we'll, 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 you, you'll see, you'll see the tickets. All right, moving on, we have uh, Shannon Ross versus Jesus Aguiar. Um, where did that go? Where did it go? There it is. So Shannon Ross in his last fight got KO'd by, I think, Clayton Rodriguez in the first round. And he's fighting Jesus Santos Aguiar, who is an, he's a beast. I mean, he just keeps coming. He wrestles. He has an expert guillotine. And from what I'm hearing, he's just going to put too heavy a pace on Shannon Ross. And Shannon Ross just has no business. You know, he's just going to get outpaced and just not have an answer for him. And yet, it's only 145. You know, they're, they're treating this 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 fight like Aguiar is a minus 300 favorite. And yet still, he's only minus 145. I mean, who in their right mind is going to play Shannon Ross coming off the first round, just destru destruction like that, against the guy who's going to put such a heavy pace on him? Well, we're going to try it. So Shannon Ross plus the 125 for 180. Okay, moving on. All right, so Cameron Samon versus Terrence Mitchell. Now, we're going to get to like four or five fights with enormous, with enormous uh, lines. And... I'm not saying we're necessarily going to play the underdog, but we're definitely going to look at it from a, you know, from a contrarian perspective. And the, and, and the one narrative that's coming from this fight more than anything else is not so much that Simon's great, not so much that Terrence Mitchell. They're saying that because Terrence Mitchell is coming from the Alaska fight scene, that he just has no chance to win. I mean, it's that that's essentially the narrative here. You know, it, they, I haven't heard too much discussion of Mitchell's actual ability to fight, okay? Except for the fact he's a huge underdog and it's from the Alaska fight scene. So I am going to suggest that the value is on Terrence Mitchell. Now, the question is, is whether I'm going to bet on Terrence Mitchell straight up at plus 40 or 30, or um, maybe, maybe be a little more circumspect. What, what that means is that, Instead of just playing him outright to win, we'll just play him to cover his price tag, which means maybe bet the fight to go over one and a half rounds or over two and a half rounds or something like that. So, like, if we look at this round props, actually look at fight props, like fight to go the distance, like plus 330. That's that's not bad. Um, let's look at round props. So fight to finish in round one is minus 135. We're not doing that. To finish, so if, to finish in round two exactly, plus 400. To start round three is plus 200. So basically, he's got to survive two rounds, and I can get two to one on that. Now, again, if I do that, I'm risking an incredible hero possibility of him actually winning the fight. Um, uh, I just don't think I have that in me, but I definitely the value is somewhere on the Mitchell side. So let's let's do that. That that that's that's probably a stupid enough bet. So we're gonna go uh, Mitchell's fight to start round three plus two hundred. All right. Um, okay, moving on. We have. Victor Petrino versus Martin Pratch. Now, this is definitely my favorite. Well, I shouldn't say favorite. Listen, everything's one unit. 
but this fight is the is the easiest one from a contrarian perspective to handicap. So you have Vitor Petrino, who in his last fight um, put on quite a show. It's seven takedowns, three reversals. Again, someone who was supposed to have the grappling advantage over him. And in most other fights, he goes for first round KOs. This guy is a beast, right? He's 10, eight and oh, 10 and oh. And he's fighting Marcin Pratniow, who is coming off of one of the worst performances uh, uh, by two fighters ever. Like he was in a fight with, with William Knight. And William Knight basically didn't throw anything at all. And it was, I mean, perhaps now won just about the ugliest matchup, you can, uh, ugliest fight you can come up with. And then if you go back into his game log, you'll see he lost to Sam Alvey. He, the only reasonable fight he won was like Ike Villanueva, who's like one of the worst. So there is nobody, just nobody on this Pratchnow side. So we're going to take a shot at this. I No, I have no idea how he's going to win. But I will promise you that he's probably good value. So Pratchnow plus the 195 uh, for 180. All right, uh, moving on, we have Tatsura Tyra versus Edgar Chires. Um, Again, we have a minus 975 and plus 675. So I am going to take the underdog in this one because it's really weird with this, with this particular matchup. You're hearing some people say, Chires is not that bad. He's got his, you know, he does have strength on his feet, uh, on the feet. Uh, he does have power in his hands, but yet no one's actually picking him to win. You know, they're like, yeah, you know, Tyre, you know, Chires, you know, he's, he's, he's kind of a tough customer, but, but Tyra's going to win. It reminds me of, of some, some of these fights where there's people say, well, I want to fade this guy, but not today. Those, those situations to, in my experience, usually mean you should have faded him today. So we're going to take a shot just for fun. We are going to take Kyrez plus the 675. Now, again, the only reason I'm not doing it like uh, the other fight, the Simon, just to make it inside rounds, is I do think that Kyrez could get the KO. Um, so if I play this fight to go over two rounds and Kyrez himself gets the KO, I'm going to be really unhappy. So we're going to take a shot. Why not? We're, we've been running hot the last uh, couple, of, couple of months. We're going to take a shot for Chires plus the 675 for 180. And we got to change this crash down to 80 as well. All right. Uh, moving on, we have Jimmy Crute versus Alonzo Menafield. I mean, this one's, an, this one's, I mean, again, same, same type of thing. Everybody's just kind of so sure what's going to happen here. So in the last fight, you had Menafield, who basically went after Crute and almost knocked him out. And yet Jimmy Cruz had this comeback where he was going to where, where he had what five takedowns or something like that. And he really came back and everybody is really just on the crude side this week. As if last week's, as if the last fight has never happened. It's people are so, so focused on, on the end of the fight that crew, like finally figured it out that they forgot about the beginning of the fight where men, where Menafield almost put him through the wall. So we are going to take the Menafield side. Um, but what we can't do, unfortunately, is play him by KO because that is that is the assumed binary outcome. In other words, people are playing either Menafield by by KO um, or Crude. Now they are playing Crude in different ways by submission, by decision. So the only thing I can really do is play either Menafield by decision or Menafield just straight up. Um, We'll just play Menafield plus the 120. All right. Uh, Yasmin Uruguay versus Denise Gomes. Uh, very popular underdog here, Denise Gomes. A little bit of recency bias here because in her last fight, she came as an underdog to uh, Brasilia, and she just put a beating on her. And now she's plus 300 against Yasmin Uruguay. Now, Yasmin Uruguay, obviously, she's she's – you know, she's really talented, but did, on, on a fight card where there's a lot of just really, really big favorites, people like to find these underdogs to play. So people will, will are going to be playing Denise Gomes. So we can't play her. I think that she's actually undervalued. Um, so we're going to have to play the, the Yaraguay side. So we have to see what part of this we can play. Um, 
I've heard that she can piece her up on the feet and win a decision. Um, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my old standby and just play her in my favorite round. So let's take a look. Um okay, where's Yaraguay? Fight parlays, fight props, round props. Okay. Yaraguay round one, three fifty. I mean, that's not bad. Just like that. I mean, Gohm's going to come right after and really survive this. So we can do this. Yaraguay round one plus three. Or we can go Yaraguay round two plus 550. The idea being Gohm's just kind of just empties the gas tank trying to do something and just runs out of gas and Yaraguay takes over round two. Let's do that. Yaraguay round two plus 550 for 180. Okay, moving on. We have Jack Della Malena versus Josiah Harrell. Um, yeah, uh, I definitely think that the value is on the Harrell side. Um, it's uh, um, the only question is uh, because what happens is everybody says Jack Della Malena is going to win. No one's picking the other side. Nobody. Okay, it's not. It's as if she he's a hundred to one, but it's only six seventy five. I mean, like. He's going to win, even according to these lines, about 12% of the time, but less than 12% of the people are picking. Okay. So this is le legitimately, I think this is really the side you're supposed to be on. So the question is, how do you want to play this again? If you really think he's going to win, you just take the plus 675. Um, but if you don't necessarily think he's going to win, but he's going to cover his price tag, you, you could play the over rounds here. So let's take a look at that, I guess. Um, round props. To start, let's how about start round three again? Yeah, let's do that. Start round three plus 350. I don't know how many people are playing that, so sounds good to me. All right, uh Robbie Lawler versus Nico Price. Um it's Robbie Lawler's retirement fight, and retirement fights never go well. They just don't. You know, from Frankie Edgar to Shogun Hua to I forgot the other guy, but all it's well, except for Amanda Nunez, obviously. But all these kind of you know aging you know veterans in their retirement fights, they usually just end up just just getting KO'd. Um, and Nico Price is minus two twenty five, strong inside the distance prop. So I presume this is going to go the same way. So we're going to go ahead and take Robbie Lawler. Pretty much. So Robbie Lawler plus the one ninety for 180. Now, if I were really smart, we play Lawler inside the distance. Wow. Get away with that. But what, what, what's, what's going on with this? I mean, I, I'm, I'm really trying to lose everybody's money here. Let's take a look and see what these odds are. Rob Reed Lawler, winning method, plus 380 inside the distance. As opposed to 190 by decision, I guess that makes some sense to take him inside the distance. The only problem with this whole Robbie Lawler side is that he's got name value. So we can't we can't do it. We can't do do the name value. Um boy, oh boy. So what are we gonna do? Robbie Lawler, the, the narrative of him winning is definitely contrarian. But I just don't think that. Yeah, you know, let's just let's just bet the fight inside the distance then. I, I guess that's what we're supposed to do. All right, so let's go. Uh fight lines or round or with fight props. Fight to not go the distance minus 250. Are we really going to fade this fight? No, we can't. We get, we got to go back to what we were doing. Let let's just let's just take Lawler plus the one ninety. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get a fixed decision. Or something like that. This is a terrible bet, but we're gonna do it anyway. All right. Um, Bo Nickel versus Val Woodburn. Um, this is basically a fixed fight where they're throwing Val Woodburn in because they need to get Bo Nickel, uh, you know, on TV. His uh, original opponent, Trey Shangor, pulled out, so he just found some stiff to come in uh, 
to, to come in against him. And they had to put a line up here. And so it's like minus 21 to one. Val, Val is plus 11 to one. So really the only question is, is how he's going to get him out of there in the first round. Some people are going with him by KO. Some people, most people are going with him by submission. And a lot of people are going in the first rounds. Um, but I do see a little bit of value here. Okay. I do. I have seen some people go with Bo Nickel by KO. The idea is he gets him down and shows off his ground and pound a little bit. So I don't think there's value in that. But what I do see value in, boy, oh boy, we're going to actually do this. We're going to play him. Wow. Bo Nickel in round two. Well, first of all, by submission plus 800 in round two. By KO is 20. 2000 in round two. How about just in the, in the plus 550 to end in the first, in, in round two? That's crazy. And that's not even just him. So Bo Nickel round two plus 650? Okay, sounds good to me. Guy's got to survive one round, right? Oh, he'll do it. I got faith. I have faith. All right. Um, all right, moving on, we have Jalen Turner versus Dan Hooker. So Dan Hooker is, this is like one of those trajectory fights, right? Jalen Turner is completely going this way. And Dan Hooker is completely going that way. And as a result, you have to be an idiot to take the guy going this way over the guy going this way. So not surprisingly, everybody's on Jalen Turner. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and take Dan Hooker. Downward trajectory, plus 240 for 180. All right. Um, just a couple of, no, we have a couple more here. We have Robert Whitaker versus Drickus Duplessis. So this one's sort of interesting. You have... Pretty heavy duty consensus here that Robert Whitaker is just better everywhere. And what's interesting is that people are conceding that Duplessis is really active. He's going to try to like uh, create a lot of chaos. But at the end of the day, Robert Whitaker is just going to be better. And I've just seen a lot of this before. And usually the underdog wins at these types of spots when everybody will give him enough credit to say, well, he's going to make it chaotic. But in the end, Robert Whitaker is just better everywhere. Um, you have like people that that say, well, I really would love to pull the trigger on Duplessis, but I just can't. Well, that's when you're supposed to do it. So we are going to take Drinkus Duplessis. Now, again, I don't know how he wins this by decision. So we're going to just play him. The only problem is I think that there is there's no line value in any Drukas Duplessis inside the distance because I think people are set on that being his only path to victory. I mean I do think he could. Boy, I wonder what him by decision is. All right now I'm getting now I'm going completely off the deep end. There's no way I can do that. Duplessis by decision eleven hundred. He's plus eleven hundred to win by decision. Two rounds of takedowns and, and activity and one round of surviving. There's just no way they're going to give him a decision on it. All right, we'll just take the plus 280. Drift his duplices for 180 plus 280. Um, all right. Moreno against Pantoja. You have Pantoja, who's the most popular underdog I've seen in a while. Um, he's beaten him twice in a row, and yet he's the underdog? Well, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, Pantoja's got to be like an easy play. So we are going to go ahead and take Moreno. Um, so we could just play him and lay the, the two to one, but we'll, we'll do something a little better. Um, we'll play him, I guess. Actually, on principle, I'm supposed to just play him minus the 200. Well, you know what you're supposed to do, actually? The narrative here is that Pantoja 
early and Moreno late. So we're probably supposed to play Moreno inside the distance. So let's go ahead and do that. Moreno win by Tico decision plus 215 for 180. All right. Uh, and finally, um, we have the main event of Alexander Volkanovsky versus Yair Rodriguez. Um, okay, so just kind of like to repeat like what we've had so far. Um, we have like all kinds of bets that can't win. Um, Kirk plus 130 against Rebovich. I mean, Rebovich obviously is like so much stronger on the feet. That that he's just going to just be way too aggressive, so Kirk has no chance. Shannon Ross just got KO'd by for in one round, and he's going to go up against Jesus Santos with all the uh, Aguiar with all the guillotines and the aggression. I mean, that's a stupid bet. Then you have Samon, who's we're actually betting on the Alaskan guy to make it to round three. It's kind of ridiculous. Petrino, like you know, ten and zero with all the aggression in the world against Pratchio, which just basically has nothing to offer. And we're going to try to bet him plus only 195. Good luck. Chires against Tyra, who never loses. Okay, like a 675 underdog's ever coming in. Menafield, I mean, we didn't learn our lesson last time. I mean, Crew was basically getting the best of him at the end there. So obviously, he's going to continue doing that. He's younger. He's the more, uh, he has more upside. Menafield's 38 years old. I mean, we can't bet him, but we did anyway. Um, Denise Gomes, I know it's like really popular. I mean, she probably is going to just follow up that, you know, great performance with another one. And women's MMA is so varied. Who would take a favor here? Well, we're going to try her. Uh, but round two plus 550. Della Jack Della Milena versus Josiah Harrell. Again, we don't think Mel Mel Jack Della wins every fight in the first round. Well, hopefully not this one. We have it plus 350 to go to round three. Robbie Lawler never wins retirement fights. Nobody does, but we hope he does this one. Bo Nickel is certainly going to finish this, this dude in round one. If he does, we lose. Vickers Duplessis plus 280 um, to overcome uh, Robert Whitaker, who basically hasn't beat everyone. So we're presuming we are going on 13, right? Uh, excuse me. Uh, and then Moreno, again, uh, to bet a guy who, against the guy he just lost, not just, but he's lost to twice already as the favorite, that's got to take some kind of mental instability to do. So we're doing it. Um, and inside the distance, where basically that's where all of um, Pantoja's equity is. So you have 12 fights, it looks like here, and you got one more that uh, uh, to go, and I got to make all my money back. So you have Volkanovski against Yair Rodriguez, um, and you're getting a little bit of love on both sides here, honestly. Like, Yair has, has been very, very strong. He supposedly has this, he has a, a lot of high-kicking upside. You know, he can get that KO. Um, I happen to think that He's probably the side here. I mean, Volkanovsky, he's just coming off of a of an incredible performance where he lost to, um, was it Shemayev? Or no, Makashev. Um, you know, uh, giving up weight, giving up everything. And he was awesome. Pound for fat pound, the best fighter in the world. Um, and usually after fights like that, um, they tend to regress just a little bit. And Yair is the hungrier guy. Um, and there's a little MMA math going against Yair, too, because Yair, he beat Emmett, but then Emmett just looked terrible. I mean, he looked finished against uh, Takoria. Um, so I think Yair is definitely the side. Now, the only thing is that is that Yair, if you bet Yair, you can either just bet him inside the distance and be with everybody else or try something different. So let's just take a look at what some of these odds are on you. We can't bet, we can't bet Volkanovski. We just can't do it. Um, you could play Yair by KO at plus 550. That's actually not bad. But it's not enough to get our money back. So what you're going to have to do, we're going to have to play him either by decision. That doesn't get our money back either. Or this is what we're after. We got to pick our favorite round and our method of victory. So I think, let's see round props. 
Yair round two plus 1,800. Yair round three plus 2,200. Yair round one plus 1,400. Yeah, I think that we are going to go with Yair in round three. Yair round three plus 2,200 to get all of our money back. Um, so, you know, this is, a, this is a rough card, I'm telling you, for us. We could really go 0-14 or 0-13 really, really easily. But we are definitely on the contrarian side of these things. And uh, good luck, everybody.